संदीप दीक्षित से मेरा दूर दूर का कोई लेना देना नहीं है और बच्चों की कसम है ना बीजेपी से गठबंधन करेंगे ना कांग्रेस से गठबंधन अरविंद केजरीवाल एंड द मेंबर्स ऑफ इस आम आदमी पार्टी और आप has created big splash in indian political scene an unknown young man without any political background all the sudden started to make the headlines in major indian media do you think he has the ability to do the type of activities he and his colleagues are involved in or he is simply playing a role in this drama as the script is written by some big players to destabilize india are you prepared to know the truth it is a story that might give you a shock of your life our story starts in washington dc july 19 2011 two people of pakistani origin were arrested in washington dc us justice department website reveals this gulam nabi fai New York Times reported that Gulam Nabi Fai was an agent of the Pakistani spy agency the Inter-Service Intelligence or ISI He closely worked with a key figure in this nexus Angana Chatterjee a US resident On December 16 2011 Angana and her husband Richard Shapiro were sacked by their employer California Institute of Integral Studies CIIS for their subversive activities and authorities have banned Richard's India entry for anti-Indian activities Angana works closely with her anti-national friends in India like Arundhati Suzanne Roy They have co-authored a book on Kashmir. They are working with three leading international anti-India groups simultaneously: Pakistan's ISI, Indian American Muslim Council (IAMC), and the Proxa, Progressive South Asians. Proxa is an umbrella group which has more than 300 ultra-communist activists around the world, with more than 20 outfits in various names in 1967 with the active involvement of chinese government communist party of india marxist leninist was formed in bengal and other states commonly known as the naxal movement hundreds of college students and young farms laborers joined the movement with the hope of bringing a revolution which was never successful However many of these people went to America and other countries and tried to continue their subversive activities Proxa and their sister groups Foil and AID was started by them The most prominent face of these people is the Federation of Inkilabi Leftists Foil It was formerly known as Federation of Indian Leftists Foil's mission has been according to them a clearing house for radical Indian activists in United States Canada and England to help build projects that make their radical politics more material Vijay Prashad is the key founder of Foil group he advocates that modern Hinduism is nothing but fascism and racism what we hear in media and used by politicians today about fascism has come from these people it is to be noted that they all talk on same line that bjp or any hindu organization is fascist and the root of such anti national ideas come from marxist historians like romila thapa Biju Matthew another co-founder has close ties with various evangelical Christian missionaries and pro dalit groups who have established in India an enormous religious conversion plan and the strategy is to convert millions of people 
especially the so-called Dalits and tribal people. Vinay Lal runs a blog called Lal Salam. His and these groups sympathy for radical Islam is very clear. Second important organization of this umbrella group in this nexus is Association for India's Development AID. AID has become direct legal channel for communists and their sympathizers to raise funds abroad. AID is doing fundraising for Arvind Kejriwal and sent volunteers to campaign during Delhi election. Now you understand why we need to introduce few prominent people outside of India who are connected to Aam Aadmi Party key members, Pakistan and ISI, ultra-communists, anti-India Dalit separatists and Christian evangelists. Council on American Islamic Relations or CAIR Kaya is known for the extreme views of its leaders. Angana, a sympathizer of Kaya and her associates wrote a letter to the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights highlighting the humanitarian crisis in Jammu and Kashmir and blamed the Indian government for alleged human rights violations. A member of Kaya, also a member of the lashkar e -Toyba, has been jailed for illegally acquiring firearms in order to train for terrorist missions against India in Kashmir. Kaya works closely with the communist groups and they believe the Quran should be the highest authority in America and Islam the only accepted religion on earth. AID which funds Aam Aadmi Party co-sponsored an event with Kaya. Now you see why some key leaders in AAP like Prashant Bhushan supports Kashmiri separatism and the armed Naxalite ultra-communists and Dalit separatists in India. Dr. Sugato Bose, professor of modern South Asian history at Harvard and grand-nephew of legendary Indian freedom leader Netaji Subhash Chandra. He is also connected to this circle we have been discussing. Professor Aisha Jalal, a Pakistani national who closely worked with Sugato Bose at Tufts University in Boston. They believe that Aurangzeb, the most cruel and fanatic of all Muslim kings in India, was the best ruler. They are clearly Islamist sympathizers. Both Aisha and Sugato along with the people like Angana has spoken at many events mostly supporting pro-Pakistani Kashmiri separatism. Indian American Muslim Council or IAMC is basically a front organization working for Islamist groups in Pakistan, India and America. If you look at their website you will feel that the sole purpose of the group is to discredit Indian government's secular standing, safeguarding banned radical terrorist Muslim groups in India such as Simi and to do propaganda work against Gujarat government. IAMC and other related Muslim groups sponsor Indian activists such as Harsh Mandar an AAP key member who rose to fame following the 2002 Gujarat riots. Harsh Dobhal, the managing editor of Combat Law, a bi-monthly Maoist publication that supports the philosophy of the violent and terrorist Naxal movement in India. As it's a well-known fact now, the Maoists, with the help of ISI, have been attempting to establish links with Naxalite groups such as the PWG, People's War Group and the MCC, Maoist Communist Center by using the Siliguri Corridor in West Bengal. Such lethal partnership is seriously undermining the internal security of India. Dobhal is also the Secretariat 
at the Independent People's Tribunal, IPT. In 2010, he published a report titled Report of Independent People's Tribunal on Human Rights Violations in Kashmir. The Human Rights Law Network follows a similar approach in exposing the violent abuse of minorities by Hindus and the Indian state as the various church supported Dalit and leftist or communist organizations discussed throughout the report. In fact, some of the donors and partners of Human Rights Law Network include Evangelisha, Entwick Lundsdienst, EED, Christian Aid, Church Auxiliary for Social Action, Dan Church Aid, etc., along with the several European government agencies. IAMC regularly invites Biju Matthew, Raju Rajgopal, John Prabudos of Federation of Indian American Christian Group, Liz McKean and many others. They work with the people like Father Cedric Prakash, a Jesuit priest and a popular face within various circles that routinely hold India guilty of operation of Christians, Muslims and Dalits. Sabran Communications is a Mumbai, India-based organization run by Tista Satilwad and her husband Javed Anand along with a magazine called Communalism Combat. In 1999, Satilwad's Communalism Combat accepted about 1.5 crores rupees from political parties such as the Congress, CPI, CPM and about 10 prominent individuals to run a series of massive ad campaigns against the BJP and labeling them as Hindu fanatics, that they are highly biased against women. Recently, she has admitted spending organization's funds for her personal purposes. Now, let us find out how through some award culture members of these umbrella groups recognize and work with each other. International Award for Religious Harmony was established in 2000 by the International Council of Evangelical Churches in memory of Australian missionary Graham Staines. This award was given to John Dayal, a known Christian activist who routinely demonizes Hindus and Hinduism. He is also the Secretary General of the All India Christian Council AICC which also works with noted anti-national organizations like the Dalit Freedom Network. In 2003, Satilwad along with the Admiral L. Ramadas received this award as well. Angana Chatterjee and Biju Matthew was awarded the Tipu Sultan Award for courageously serving India and India's interests. Kaleem Khwaja, a key ideologue of the Association of Indian Muslim of America, AIM, who wrote his infamous article in Mili Gazette, Brother, Can You Spare a Tear for Taliban, also received the Tipu Sultan Award. Raju Rajgopal was given the Bahadur Shah Zafar Award for promoting pluralism and communal harmony in India. The Magsasi Award. Aruna Roy received this award in the year 2000. Kejriwal got this award in 2006. A declassified US Central Intelligence Agency CIA secret document clearly shows the link between CIA and Rockefeller Foundation, Ford Foundation and Magsasi Award. Even in the citation of Kejriwal for the Magsasi Award, the first reference was made to CIA. The document clearly shows that how so-called intellectuals, professors and students of target countries are financially enticed by the Western forces using prestigious organizations like the Ford Foundation. Arvind Kejriwal and Many other ARP associates were getting funds from these Western sources since 2002. 
under the banner of Parivartan, Kejriwal received funds from World Bank for a Jan Sunwai campaign even as the organization was not registered. Though it was a criminal act, authorities looked the other way or was there a connection with the ruling class? This funding nearly coincides with the period of Kejriwal's resigning from service not accepted in 2006 and Ford Foundation funding and grant of Magsasay Award. In fact, Kejriwal got the Magsasay Award shortly after he featured in the World Bank report in 2005. The biggest fraud is that the donors, that is, organizations that funded Kejriwal's so-called NGOs were the decision makers in the award of his Magsasay Award. This includes the CIA. Further, the representative of Ford Foundation on India Stephen Solnik admitted on 31st August 2012 that the Magsasay Award for Kejriwal was funded by them. So, now we can have a quick look at the network that work hand in hand against India on issues connected to Kashmiri separatism, Naxal insurgencies and also the Gujarat riots. Now you can see clear connections between Islamists, Kashmiri separatists, ultra-communists, Christian evangelists and Western forces. Pakistan, ISI, Kashmir separatism, Angana Chatterjee, Federation of Indian Leftists, AID, IAMC, Kaya, Harsh Mandar, Medha Patkar, Tista Satlwad, Arundhati, Cedric Prakash, Vinayak Sain, Naxals. Basically, a global confederation of anti-India forces. The connections are more obvious when one finds that all these people have something to do with the Gujarat riots in 2002 and their incessant propaganda has projected a very bad image of India in the world. It may not be too far-fetched to think that some of these people, including Angana Chatterjee, works for ISI. You may now guess who worked with some US government establishment to deny visa to Mr. Narendra Modi. Medha Patkar has been given ticket from our platform. Most people know her for being responsible for delay in Sardar Sarovar Dam project. But her real face is not hidden anymore. Tribals in Chhattisgarh had thrown her out of the village of Dantewara for her pro naxal activities. She has close relationship with Angana Chatterjee. There are many disturbing evidences of Patkar's Namada Bachao Andolan NBA's nefarious collision with foreign elements. This in the form of an exchange of confidential emails between Patkar and by Patrick McCulley, ex-director International River Networks IRN based at Berkeley, United States. Now, who is this Patrick McCulley? He is a man who cavorts with enemies of India, particularly with Angana Chatterjee on the board of IRN, a known India beta who was very close to Gulam Nabi Fai of ISI. How did Medha Patkar get her finances? Her Namada Bachao Andolan NBA is described as a social movement. The Supreme Court has noted the NBA is not a registered entity. So, how does it bank its money? How does it account for its expenses? The NBA, which, as we have seen, has international connections, does not seem to have its own website. 
foreign sources fund its support groups. But which foreign sources? Finally, accused of faking medical certificates, fined more than once for dodging court hearings. Patkar is now accused by the Supreme Court itself of filing a false affidavit before it. EID has done much fundraising and recruiting volunteers for AAP's Delhi election campaign. We have already seen AID as one of the important hand of the communist umbrella group Proxa. We know the connection of AID, FOSA, Kaya and others. Asha for Education and India Literacy Project both have partnerships with AID. Clearly with AID and AAP's connection you can see the nexus between Arvind Kejriwal and all the anti-national forces within and outside India. AID's volunteers and funding targets demonstrate that AID supports Marxist or communist organizations, some with known criminal activities and ideology in the name of development. AID sponsors and works with mostly groups in India associated with extreme communist outfits such as AIDWA, DYFI, PWA group or activist. AIDWA or All India Democratic Women Association is the women's wing of the Communist Party of India Marxist CPIM. Brinda Karat the veteran communist leader and member of CPIM was former general secretary of AIDWA for several years. DYFI or Democratic Youth Federation of India is the youth wing of CPIM. DYFI is also known for its abuse of law and order threatening individuals who speak out against its activities. Here are some more evidences on how AID that supports AAP has close ties with other communist groups. In 2005, Feroz Mehdi, writing for a Canadian newspaper called Alternatives, describes meeting with the director of AID India, Mr. M. A. Devdas. He elaborates on the strategic partnership by various communist organizations and AID. In 2005, the website of the Communist Party of India, Marxist-Leninist, was registered under alternatives with the address in Canada, same as alternatives. AID has organized several events with FOSA as discussed earlier. These events have featured members of FOIL such as Biju Matthew, Vijay Prashad, Vinay Lal, Anganath Chatterjee and many others, the key figures in US anti-India groups as we had seen earlier. AID is Arvind Kejriwal's main support group outside of India today. So, it is clear that Kejriwal has great connections with anti-India groups with links to ISI, Islamists and Christian missionaries and communist groups within India and outside. The candidacy of Vinayak Sen, a known Naxal sympathizer, has now joined up proves the point further. Now, let us once more review the connections with other Western forces. It is well known that groups such as the Central Intelligence Agency of America CIA operatives recruit and work through the academic route for their activities in various countries. Most likely one such academic researcher is Shimrit Lee. This New York University researcher Shimrit worked with Kejriwal's controversial NGO Kabir in 2009-10 and was doing research on public power, India and other democracies. 
after staying in India for some four months, she is believed to have gone to Egypt and witnessed the Tahrir Egypt uprising. It was alleged that Shimrit Lee advised Kejriwal and Sisodia in 2010 for public protest in India and creation of Mohalla and Gram Sabhas to achieve ulterior motives. It is alleged that Kejriwal and Sisodia hosted a suspicious researcher who may have been active in the Middle East, Chad in Africa, without any sanction from the Home Ministry required as per law of the land. It may be possible the 19-year-old at that time did not have any clue of what she was doing, but her sponsors in West were working through her. Kejriwal is linked with the US-based NGO Awaz, which was funding civil disobedience movements in Egypt, Syria, Libya and Tunisia. Kejriwal tried to hide much of this information by shutting down the website of both Parivartan and Kabir when it came under scrutiny. Key funding source Ford Foundation also was removed with all details of funds given to Kabir from its website in 2012. Ford Foundation in 2002 granted Arvind Kejriwal's NGO Sampurna Parivartan and CSDS $80,000 and $250,000 respectively. Key associates of Arvind Kejriwal like Yogendra Yadav have been functionaries of the CSDS. This funding to Kejriwal was a criminal activity because in 2002 he was still a government servant. Government servants are not permitted to float NGOs and receiving funds without due permission. Kejriwal, while on study leave, while getting full government salary started Parivartan along with Manish Sisodia in 2000-2001. On its website, Parivartan on March 10, 2009 declared that it is not an NGO or a registered organization and for income tax purposes it was an association of persons. However, in 2002, the website declared the organization was registered under Society's Registration Act 1860 and was exempt from income tax in Section 80G of 12A of IT Act. This is a clear fraud on India and Indians. Kejriwal branched off from Parivartan to establish yet another NGO, Kabir. As per the documents, Kabir was established on 15th August 2005. This was again illegal as Kejriwal continued to be in government service. While Kabir claims that the NGO began its operation on 15th August 2005 in which the contribution from the Ford Foundation was rupees 43 and half lakhs whereas the annual report of Ford Foundation claims to have made a contribution to Kabir to the tune of $172,000 on 15th July 2005. It is not only intriguing that the Ford Foundation funding to Kabir began from the very first year of its operation but the money was given one month before its birth. The fraud is evident from the two sets of documents of Kabir and Ford Foundation. Kabir in its annual written indicated that between 2005 and 2011, 75 lakh 54,006 rupees were received from Ford Foundation in two tranches. It may be reminded that it was at this time that lot of questions were being raised about illegal foreign funding to Kejriwal's political activities. Parivartan and Kabir suddenly shut down their websites after coming under scrutiny in 2012. It emerges that after liberal funding from various Western sources, 
Kejriwal decided to send his resignation from government service in 2006. Moreover, the biggest fraud is that the donors, that is, organizations that funded Kejriwal's so-called NGOs were decision makers in the award of his Magasese award. This includes the CIA. Further, the representative of Ford Foundation on India, Stephen Solnik, admitted on 31st August 2012 that the Magasese award for Kejriwal was funded by them. Subsequently, foreign money began to flow into Kejriwal's NGO. As per the response to an RTI filed by a website Beyond Headlines, the other foreign contributors to Kejriwal's NGO Kabir were Ford Foundation 86 lakhs 61,742 rupees PRIA 2 lakh 37,035 rupees Manjunath Shanmugam Trust 3 lakh 70,000 rupees Dutch Embassy 19 lakh 61,000 968 rupees Association for India's Development 15 lakh rupees India's Friends Association 7 lakh 86,500 rupees United Nations Development Program 12 lakh 52,742 rupees while 11 lakh 35,000 857 rupees were collected from individual donations between 2007 to 2010. Is it also a mere coincidence that Kejriwal never served out of Delhi during his government service and helping him in this bid was none other than Mrs. Sonia Gandhi? It is well known now that he has strong ties to the Congress party. Are you worried about corruption? Are you worried about our national security? Arvind Kejriwal with connections to many anti-national forces is therefore not a political threat but a security threat to this country. His main objective being to destabilize India and to perpetuate foreign agenda. Let us now review the background of the key Aam Admi Party members. Almost all of them have controversial and questionable background. To many people, Anna Hazare is a mentor of Kejriwal. But the actual mentor of Arvind Kejriwal is Aruna Roy, who has been the head of National Advisory Council, which worked like a quasi-government, influenced the decision of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and associated with the Congress government and Sonia Gandhi. Arvind Kejriwal initially worked with Aruna Roy to bring in Right to Information Act and for which he got the Ramon Magasese Award in 2006. However, this RTI Act was first started by Anna Hazare in Maharashtra in 2000. Aruna Roy is one of the persons who had sent a petition to President Pranab Mukherjee for mercy towards Ajmal Kasab, the terrorist who killed many innocents in Mumbai terror attack on 26 November 2008. Like Arvind Kejriwal, she also won the Ramon Magasese Award in 2000. Prashant Bhushan is an activist, lawyer and politician but has been involved in many controversies especially regarding Kashmir, Naxalism and terrorist attacks. Bhushan was vocal against the hanging of Ajmal Kasab, who was responsible for the 2008 Mumbai attacks. He also signed a petition seeking presidential clemency for Afzal Guru who was convicted for the 2001 Indian Parliament attack. He was the counsel for the four people accused of the attack. Prashant called for a referendum in the valley to decide whether or not the army should be deployed to deal with the internal threats in Kashmir. 
Suzanne Arundhati Roy. We have already seen how she is connected to AID, Angana and others in the Umbrella Group and wanted the stay of death sentence given to Afzal Guru. She also linked the 2008 Mumbai attack to the Kashmir issue. She has always criticized the government actions against Naxalism even though the fact remains that Naxalism in India is the next bigger threat after terrorism. Manish Sisodia was a social activist and journalist before becoming an ARP executive. He also was part of Kabir Foundation funded by Ford Foundation. He and his wife were found to have misused foreign funds sent for one of their NGO organization and used that money for personal use. Yogendra Yadav has been a senior fellow at the Center for the Study of Developing Societies, CSDS, Delhi since 2004. He was associated with National Advisory Council, NAC, on Right to Education Act, RTE, appointed by United Progressive Alliance, UPA government. Yogendra Yadav was funded by ICSSR of Jawaharlal Nehru University, which in turn was funded by Ford Foundation. Yadav has been a political advisor to Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi. Shazia Elmi is a politician and social activist. Shazia Elmi comes from a Kanpur Muslim family with links to Indian National Congress Party. Elmi was seen in a sting operation along with other AAP leaders such as Kumar Vishwas allegedly accepting money for the party in return for favors. She is worth around 37 crores. Harsh Mandar We have already talked about him. Like Aruna Roy, he was a member of National Advisory Council constituted by Sonia Gandhi. Like Prashant Bhushan and others, he was also one of the person who recommended that Afzal Guru should not be hanged. Medha Patkar We already have seen her dubious character and anti-national activities. Meera Sanyal The AAP Lok Sabha candidate Meera Sanyal has left Royal Bank of Scotland to enter politics. She is on the board of Pradhan, a NGO that works in Naxalite areas in rural India which was established by her but has been funded by foreign organization. Gopal Rai, ex-member of Sonia Gandhi's NAC, was president of All India Students Association associated with CPIM and CPIL which is known for its pro-Maoist stance. Why so many of Congress government's National Advisory Council members are now with AAP? Do you now see the connections between Gulam Nabi Fai, AID, FOIL, Khair, IAMC, Angana, Arundhati, Medha Patkar, Harsh Mandar, Tista Satalwad, Prashant Bhushan and Gopal Rai, AAP and Congress? People asked why Congress party supported the Delhi government of Arvind Kejriwal. Does it make any logical sense the party and leadership against whom the AAP folks pretended to have fought supported to form a government? Any fool would guess the internal pact it had with Congress party. No evidence is necessary. Finally, let us take a look at some key Indian media who have given disproportionate coverage for Arvind Kejriwal and AAP. The key players are closely associated with India's ruling establishment, the Congress and communist parties and its leaders. The biggest supporter of AAP today are some of the largest media houses. Many of those are owned by foreign companies and many in Congress party. New Delhi Television or NDTV 
is the key founder Pranoy Roy. His wife Radhika Roy is co-brother of Prakash Karat, General Secretary of the Communist Party of India. His wife and Brinda Karat are sisters. And Pranoy Roy's first cousin is the famous far leftist, pro Maoist, Naxalite, pro Kashmiri, anti national, friend of Angana Chatterjee, Arundhati Suzanne Roy. CPIM's senior member of Politburo and parliamentary group leader is Sitaram Yachuri. Sitaram Yachuri is married to Seema Chisti. Seema Chisti is the resident editor of Indian Express. Editor in chief of the Hindu newspaper is Narsimhan Ram. He is a former leader of the Communist Student Group, Student Federation of India. NDTV's Barkha Dutt and Veer Sangvi of Hindustan Times are intermediaries for UPA allies who were exposed in the Radia Gate scandal which in turn is related to 2G scam and are virtual congress and AAP spokespersons in their capacities as electronic media personalities. In return, Barkha and Sangvi are rewarded with Padma Shri and other monetary compensation by the Nehru dynasty or Congress party. Barkha Dutt's personal life is surrounded with mystery. Some people say that she is married twice. Both of her husbands are Kashmiri Muslims. NDTV has been giving extra space to secessionists from Kashmir who want independence from India and also good coverage of people like Tista Satilvad and Arundhati Roy. NDTV's Sonia Singh is the wife of Uttar Pradesh Congress MP, Union Minister and ex-Princely State Ruler Mr. R. P. N. Singh of the Congress Party. NDTV's Nidhi Rajdan is also famous for her legendary pro-Congress and anti-BJP bias. India Today magazine has been bought over by NDTV. The group also owns Aaj Tak and Business Today among other media. Its Indian head is Rajdeep Sardesai and his wife Sagarika Ghosh. Sagarika's father Bhaskar Ghosh was made the chief of Prasar Bharti Doordarshan during Indira and Rajiv regimes. Bhaskar Ghosh was well known for personal loyalty to the Nehru and Gandhi dynasty. Hindustan Times, Shobhna Bhartiya, owner and editor-in-chief of Hindustan Times is a Congress MP from Rajya Sabha. Vinod Sharma, HT political affairs editor, appears as a Congress spokesman on all TV panel discussions. P. Sainath of the The Hindu is the nephew of Congress politician V. Shankar Giri and the grandson of V. V. Giri, ex-president of India and famous Congress politician. Giri was especially known to be one of the first few staunch loyalists of Indira Gandhi. News24 Hindi media channel is owned by ex-journalist and editor Rajiv Shukla, famous Congress MP in Rajya Sabha, Union Minister, Industrialist, BCCI Vice President and IPL Chairman. Many communist ideologues have really perpetrated some kind of stranglehold on India's journalism, media and intellectual space where the Congress party essentially owns and controls every single mainstream media house in India including Hindustan Times, The Times of India, NDTV, CNN IBN, The Hindu, Tehelka, Outlook, etc. And finally, the key AAP leaders are also part of this media network. Manish Sisodia, ex-journalist with Z News and All India Radio. Yogendra Yadav, since 1996, 
he has been a sephologist and political commentator on a number of television channels in India including Doordarshan, NDTV and CNN IBN. Shazia Ilmi was previously a television journalist and anchor at Star News and Ashutosh, ex-managing editor, IBN 7. No wonder pro-Congress and pro aap propaganda by these media houses are so obvious. So, outside of India, these former Indian nationals like Angana, Biju, Vijay, Vinay, Khalim Khwaja, etc. work with Pakistan, Islamist, churches, etc. to undermine India's image. In India, communists, missionaries and Islamist groups work with them to undermine the Indian state's economy, security and stability. These are not only enemies of India but of humanity. Arvind Kejriwal and his AAP associates are too deeply associated with these subversive groups. Arvind Kejriwal is India's biggest scam associated with Congress party. It is far more impacting and dangerous than all other government scams.